Hallelujah. God is a good, good God. And God is a good, good Father. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. What am I talking about? Um, so, <laughs> last time I had the, the pleasure of coming and sharing stuff God had given me, I, I talked about in order for us to have a great harvest of the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, which the world so desperately needs, we've got to take responsibility for our relationship with God. We have got to tend our, our, our relationship with God like a garden. Make sure it's watered with the Spirit. Make sure you've got the food from the Bible and, and His Word and, and all that. And yes, praise God. Um, but you know what? I realize that some people might not know how to tend their relationship with God. They may not know how to take responsibility for it and grow that relationship with God. Because there was a time where I didn't, and um, I'm still learning, to be honest, in a lot of ways. But really, um, I used to, you know, a big thing that was said when I was younger was, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. And I wanted to say that, but I didn't know how, and I didn't get it. So tonight, I'm going to share some. <laughs> God is so good. Now, I'm going to share some tips for practicing being with the Lord and tending that relationship with him. Um, and first, I want to talk about our mindset, because, you know, <laughs> I don't know, people are, we're so good at beating ourselves up when that is not God's heart, of course. But um, so on mindsets, I, I want to tell you when it comes to learning to spend more time with the Lord for letting the Holy Spirit just wash over you, jump in where you are. Don't let regrets of possibly missing opportunities in the past mess you up. Just be like, that's then, this is now, and I'm jumping in with God more fully now. So jump in where you are. And don't compare yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Got to keep laughing because God's good. Anyway, don't compare yourself. There's always going to be someone who seems like they've got it together. Like these ladies, they seem like they've got it together with God. They're just so mushy-gushy with God, and it's awesome. Yeah, you can compare yourself. Well, well, I'm not like that. So what? You're supposed to love God the way he made you to love him and to interact with him the way he made you to interact with him. So don't compare yourself. And uh, don't let how things have gone in your past, um, don't let the past be the judge of what's going to happen in your future. God makes things new every morning. I know that sometimes like, oh my goodness, I haven't been in the word for three weeks. And there's this desire, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch up today. It, it's not going to happen. So, um, but actually, <laughs> that's the other. Um, and, and I've told myself, well, I haven't done that good in the past. Why is the next going to be any different? Well, because God continues to grow us and change us. And so don't judge what can happen in the future by the past. So that's, so work on your mindset a little bit so that you're healthy going in. Um, whew. So the first thing I want to talk is getting worship out of the church. Now I'm meaning in the church building, not the body, of course, but, um, Corporate worship is awesome. I love corporate worship. I love coming together with others and worshiping. But in order to take responsibility for my own relationship with God, I have got to start worshiping. I have got to start worshiping outside of that corporate worship setting. And that, that I mean, I can see some people going, um, I'm supposed to play an instrument and sing for a while at home. 
that's that's really not what it's about. You can use CDs, but or or MP3s or whatever they are today. I still have CDs, but um, but it's not about the music. It's not about the singing. It's about worshiping and, and pouring out, and um, pouring out before the Lord. And I and I was trying to find ways to explain what worship is. And the thing that I that I thought about is you watch somebody who's very caught up in hero worship over some star or some um, person they find amazing. If they have the opportunity, they will follow that person around wherever they go. Um, they will be constantly telling you about the things that person did. And they will constantly be telling that person, oh, I love you. You're so amazing. You're, I love you. And um, they also agree with everything that person says. And I'm going to tell you, that's worship. And in worshiping God, yes, a great part of it is just saying, I love you, I adore you, you're amazing. And telling that to God, but also declaring everything he's done and how awesome it is. And to agree with what he's saying and what he's doing, that's worship too. And it's, and it's going to look different. And... Um, <laughs> Praise God. Uh, one of the ways that I found, as I was thinking about this and talking about it, one of the ways I worship on my own is I preach myself happy. I will pick something that God has brought to my mind from the scripture um, or something that he's been talking to me about, and I'll start saying it out loud like I'm teaching someone. And no one else is there but me and God. <laughs> And it's also fun because I can also feel him going, no, that's not quite the right direction, or yep, this is the right direction. But talking over the things he's done, agreeing with what he's doing, that's worship. And it can be through music. So yes, you can turn on your music and sing to the Lord. Take a few minutes to think about what the words are. Are you declaring his goodness? Are you telling him that you love him? That's all worship. And we can do it in so many ways. Um, another thing on uh, in worshiping that uh, I want to mention with um, t uh, declaring his things is also if you have a spiritual language, if you speak in tongues, that is a great thing to do to just speak in tongues and go for it because that's the spirit speaking through you. And in fact, if you go to... Um, 1 Corinthians 14.4, and this is the pastor's translation. It says, the one who speaks in tongues advances his own spiritual progress. And that is something, that's what I'm talking about. That's what we need to do, right? And we, we want to advance our spiritual pros progress. So when you're worshiping, when you're taking that set-aside time to be with God, just you and him, and worship him, if you speak in tongues, go for it, because it's fun. And it advances your spiritual progress. Love it. Another way to worship is communion. Um, some, and, and doing it on your own with God or with your family to, again, take it outside the walls of the church and put it into your life. It doesn't have to be extravagant or special. Um, grab some crackers. Sorry. Okay. Gotta slow down. Um, grab some crackers or a hunk of bread if that's what you have. And juice, water. It doesn't really matter because it's the heart of the issue, not what you're holding. And go through, what, it, what did Jesus say? Do this often in remembrance of me. So take that bread and remember his sacrifice for you. Take that drink and remember his blood shed for you. And you're taking that in. You're taking it into yourself. Sorry. <clears throat> so it's just um, really amazing. So take communion outside of church, just you and God, that is worship too. And um, this was really pointed out to me 
recently. Um, last week, Christy mentioned a podcast called uh, Into the Fire with Duncan and Kate Smith. And I decided to look that up and listen to it. Actually, kind of a Holy Spirit God thing. I had subscribed to it the morning before she mentioned it last week. But um, as I was listening to it, um, I went and I re listened to the second one, which they titled Encountering the Tangible Presidents Presence of the Trinity. Um, oh my goodness, it's amazing. There's stuff in there about how communion is supernatural. It also talks about how uh, God does receive our worship. And so that is communing with him to continue to worship. And the more we worship, the bigger God gets in our lives. <clears throat> so I really suggest going and checking out that podcast Encountering the Tangible Presence of the Trinity with uh, Into the Fire with Duncan and Kate Smith. Um, so communion, another great, wonderful way to spend time with the Lord, spend time with the Holy Spirit, is soaking. Um, I love soaking and little piece of life trivia for me, it was after a soaking meeting that my husband first told me that he loved me. So, yeah. But um, soaking, great way to spend time in the presence of God. So <clears throat> I went online because I'm like, I've, I've, I've been to soaking meetings. I've soaked by myself, but I didn't quite know how to describe things. So I looked up how to soak in the Holy Spirit on the internet, and interesting, interestingly enough, I found um, on catchthefire.com the ultimate guide to soaking in the presence. And I would, I would very highly suggest going and looking that up, but I, I um, went ahead and put on here the section of how do I soak, and this was put together by Carol Arnott. Um, so I'm just going to read her what she says to do. That way I'll get it right. <laughs> get quiet and comfortable. Soaking is about resting. So it makes no sense to be too hot, too cold, or stuck in a crowded room. Some people soak on the floor with a pillow or on a couch. Play some relaxing music. Music really helps your mind focus. Put on some worship music that is relaxing for you. Music without words, without words is ideal because it allows you more freedom to focus on what the Holy Spirit is saying. There's even a whole, excuse me, even a whole genre of soaking music to pick from. Yes, there is, even on YouTube, it's amazing. Welcome the Holy Spirit. Simply pray, I welcome you, Holy Spirit. It doesn't need to be longer or fancier than that. In Matthew 7, Jesus reminds us that God is a kind of father who gives good gifts. He is ready and waiting to give you what you need. Get rid of distractions. Put your phone on silent. Close your laptop. Go to a room where there's not a pile of laundry to fold. You know what distracts you, and you'll get better, you'll get better at removing those distractions the more you soak. And Carol says she keeps a notepad next to her as she makes a list of everything that comes into her head. That way, she's got a note of everything she might need to remember for later. Listen to what God says. God might speak through words, pictures, memories, or Bible verses. How long do I soak? Sometimes, some experienced soakers suggest that you won't fully switch off until you've been resting for 15 minutes. In the School of, Mi School of Ministry in Toronto, the weekly soaking session is just shy of two hours long. Some people take one long song at a time. Let yourself be led by the Holy Spirit. It will take time to build up stamina, but practice always helps. Keep practicing. 
Soaking is not something you're going to nail overnight. As John and Carol Arnott say in preparing, the, preparing for the Glory, this takes practice. We have very busy minds and are very busy. We have very busy minds and very busy lives, and it takes some practice to learn to get quiet. But it's, it's so worth it. And, and in this, again, I would say jump in right where you are. And if you only have 15 minutes to soak, take those 15 minutes to soak. Put on the song, lay back, and just be quiet before the Lord. And if you don't get words or pictures or things like, don't worry about it. The point is to say, here I am, Lord, be with me. And that's, that's what it's all about. Love it. So in the, in the worshiping, in the soaking, taking communion, that's setting time aside. And in setting time aside specifically for the Lord is good. But I'm going to actually encourage you to even take working on your relationship outside that set-aside time with God. Or if you're like me and there's been lots of trouble, I've been like, oh, I woke up too late. I can't spend the time. Let it go. And I'm going to give you some ideas on how throughout your day as you go, um, continuing to being in the presence, being with the Holy Spirit, and worshiping even when you're doing mundane, mundane tasks. Having trouble pr pronouncing things tonight. <clears throat> so, one of the, again, if you speak in tongues, this makes it really easy. As you're folding that pile of clothes, as you're driving, as you're washing the dishes, as you're looking something up on the internet, I don't care what you're doing. Speak in tongues. Let the Spirit pray through you. Let their, you're glorifying God. And you don't have to think about it directly. And so in doing that, you're inviting the presence of God. And you can do it any time. And again, when you're speaking in tongues... You're advancing your own spiritual progress. Woohoo! Um, and it doesn't, if you don't have a prayer language, another thing that you can do is it can be just as you're going about mundane tasks, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. Jesus, I love you. And because a lot of the things we do during our day doesn't take our complete focus. We can bring in, I love you, Jesus, 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 God, you are good. And you can keep washing the dishes, folding clothes, or whatever it is, your daily tasks that you have to do. And you can keep saying it in your mind when you're brushing your teeth. And you can, and you can do it in the shower. It doesn't matter where. It's just keeping that communication open even as we're going through our day. Another one that uh, I really like um, that you can do in those mundane tasks is sing unto the Lord. Just like we see in Song 96, you know. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. You can sing, and you can sing songs that you know. You don't have to know them all. Sing the snippets. It's still praising God. Or if, God, if you're one who um, has songs rise up in you, sing those songs. And then I think they can write them down, and is there still a songwriting thing going on? Yeah. Get together with people who are writing songs. But you can, you can sing unto the Lord and stay focused on him while you're doing mundane tasks. It does not have to be a specific set-aside time. Um, and then one thing that I really like to do in those short moments that um, I can't really do anything more. I just have to sit and wait for a few moments um, is just sit and turn my affection toward God. 
And I realized that that, like, well, how do you do that? Take a moment to think about someone you really care about, um, what, your baby, your husband, someone just is who is precious to you. And think about looking at them and your love just radiating, idea, radiating off of you onto them. And now do that with God. Do that with Holy Spirit. And it can be just a moment. Um, for me, when I'm teaching uh, spelling to my boys, we, I dictate sentences that they have to write. And it doesn't do me any good to try to get anything done while they're uh, writing down that sentence I dictated to them. And so in that maybe 30 seconds to one minute, a lot of times I just, I'm like, oh, Holy Spirit. And just turn my heart and adoration towards him in that one moment. It's good to do those things in soaking and in when you have time to sit down and do it. But it can be done in the moment. And it can be done for a moment. Um, this next one, I don't really have, I don't know that I have practical advice how to um, go about this. But uh, one of the, the things that I think people might get confused on is that we think that spending time in the Holy Spirit is that ooey-gooey encounter, and we get drunk in the Holy Spirit, and, you know, we might not be good for much for a while. <laughs> and that's a good encounter with God. But I really think that that, that is one type of encounter with God. And I think that we need to learn how to invite him in to those things that we have to focus very hard on and be very careful with, like using power tools. <laughs> you don't want to be ooey-gooey drunk in the spirit. You want to be focused, paying attention to what you're doing. But God has given us jobs and projects uh, where we have to be very focused, very precise, and everything we do is supposed to be done unto the Lord, right? I think that's um, Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. And that means your jobs and your projects where you can't be turning all your attention to God. But instead, I want to encourage you to invite him in to your focus, and really, when we pray a lot of times for, for people who are going into surgery, we pray for surgeons to do this, right? We pray that, that God guides their hand and guides their scalpel or whatever is being used. But what about programmers when you're coding? Invite God in to do the coding um, when someone's building something or using something they have to put their focus in, invite God in. And I think we'll find that one, that'll build our relationship with God, but, but two, it'll bring even another step of excellence into what he's given us to do in our, in our daily lives. And I really truly believe that doing those jobs that he's given us to do with excellence and inviting him in is worship, and time with him, too. So, yeah. Now, getting into the word. I love the Bible. I love God's word. Um, it's one of the places that I personally have to be more intentional to make sure I get in, though. I love it, but I'm not so great sometimes at getting in. But there are some, that, some tips and things that I have seen others do, that I've worked on doing, and I'm going to pass them along to you. But I'm not going to tell you how to read the Bible because um, there's so many different ways. I'm not worried about that. First of all, set aside time. And remember, it doesn't have to be multiple hours. I don't care if your neighbor, your mentor, your pastor, whoever, spends three hours every, every morning in the Bible, that doesn't mean you have to, so no condemnation. 
Okay. okay. Um, if it's five to ten minutes, I don't care. Just find the time you're going to take, set the timer if it has to stay that time, and go for it. Just get in the word. Um, also, invite the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. Always. The Bible is just words without him. The Bible's dry and nothing without the Holy Spirit. So invite the Holy Spirit into your reading every single time. Um, pick away. Just pick one. You can, you can go look up online for reading plans. You can do Bible studies where you can get the books for them or you talk to someone else and they give you one. Look up a subject and read, uh, read all the related verses. Use a devotional and look up the scriptures it references. Ask those you trust around you for suggestions. Again, the method doesn't matter. Just do it. Pick one and go for it. Um, and then it's also good not just to read the word, but to meditate on the word. Think about it. Repeat it. Memorize it. And trust me, you're going to repeat it a lot if you're trying to memorize it, right? <laughs> um, but I've, I've, one of the awesome things about memorizing scripture that I found and about getting it into you is that makes it easy sometimes for God to bring things up because all the res all of a sudden you're remembering scripture and what it's about. So memorize it, repeat it, spend time thinking about it and mull it over. Um, and another tip I have for meditating on the word is making it personal. Um, and, and personalize it as you read it. So, for example, if you look up Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, you'll see, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Great. That's good. I love it. I've had my kids memorize it. But the way I like to do it, I like to personalize it. And I personalize it, and I'm not only reading it, but I make it into a prayer. And it's, I will trust in you, Lord, with all my heart. I will lean not on my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge you, and you shall direct my paths. And there's a lot of places in Proverbs and... Um, psalms and other places where as I'm reading I'm like I can make this personal and so I, I do that I put I in there um, you know in Psalm 100 it says enter, his, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and I want to go I will enter into your gates with thanksgiving I will enter into your courts with praise and just declaring the things he has for us and making it personal. So that's my little tip, my tips <laughs> that I have for reading the word. And I am missing. Yep. Oh, there it is. I found it. Um, some of the last things is just uh, talking about things you surround yourself with that may not be very specific, um, putting you into a place of worship and inviting the Holy Spirit in through everything, but it helps make it easier to do so. And that's first surrounding yourself with other people who are going hard after God. Um, and having people who you look up to that when you have questions, when you uh, feel like you're screwing it all up, that you will go, you can go to, and they will turn you back, and to turn your eyes on God—not turn you away, but turn you, turn your eyes back on God, 
and encourage you and, and give you suggestions. So look for those people in your life and surround yourself with other people who are going hard after God. And it's funny, when you do that, you'll be more impactful to the people who don't yet. Um, and then godly media. Put on that music. I don't care if you're singing with it. I don't care if you're focusing on it. If you've got music that's talking about God, talking about the great things he does, talking about how amazing he is going on around you. If your focus starts to go somewhere else, it helps filter you back. And so have that around you. I'm not against all secular music or anything like that, but I've found that for my health and sanity and for many others, uh, listening to music that is dedicated to God is very helpful. Um, and then I, I also love how I walk into people's houses and they've got scriptures and pictures that remind them of Jesus. And again, I mentioned the um, podcast, Into the Fire. You can listen to that podcast. You can listen to podcasts done by other uh, preachers, by other teachers, and just have the word of God coming at you from all sides. Because... Wow, it's good, and it helps you start to take responsibility for your own relationship with God. Yes, somebody's speaking it, else is speaking it out in those moments, but you're turning it on. You're turning that on instead of the news, or for me, I'm turning that on instead of an audio novel. And so it keeps my mind thinking about the good things of God in everything I do. So what we surround ourselves with when, when we have that opportunity will make a difference in helping us continue to go after God with everything we've got. So, how should I finish this slide? These special times, like tonight here, where we've got a door being opened, we've got the fire of God, we've got an encounter and the presence, and there's joyful laughter, and people are seeing angels. That is amazing. And yes, that'll encourage us, that'll help us grow. But it's time to take hold of God with both hands, and outside the walls of the church, personal, by ourselves, or with a small few people once in a while, we've got to go after God in that same way and expecting him to bring fire into our car, into our home, into our workplaces because we're there, and to expect encounters with the Holy Spirit no matter where we are because we are the temple we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Encounters should be happening in our lives every single day. And so if you've had that mindset, I need to go to church, I need to go to my pastor, I need to go to my mentor, uh, I need to go to this book or this conference. No, 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 no. Well, those things are good. But you need to start crying out for that for yourself in your own life and that and, and pouring out the adoration toward the Lord on your own and creating that stronger relationship for him. And when we do that, the world is going to be a better place because we're going to be pouring out his love because we're going to be so full of it. We're going to be so full of his love. We're going to be so full of who he is that it's going to pour out on others around us. Thank you.